Shanti Bhavan is a school um, conceived from a different way of looking at the problem. It is one thing, you know, you put in a certain amount of money and you can embark on a literacy program and thousands of kids can be put through school and they become literate. Noble thing, you know, the World Bank and uh, other organizations are counting how many people have become literate. Now they say 60% of the villagers in India, village children are literate. Everybody is happy. It used to be 30, now it is 60. But what do they, what do, they do? They can read a signpost and add one plus one and they're literate according to the statistician. In fact, I found out that the government officials, the statistician comes to a village a house, hut, and knocks at the door and asks, have you been to school? Yeah, yeah, I've been to school. Which school? That school over there. He's so excited to say I went to school. But he can't even write one word. And he's counted as illiterate. This is how the numbers add up. Are they fit for today's uh, employment? Are they capable of uh, earning something beyond you know, the menial labor type of income? And so the question is, what kind of model do you really want? Do you really want to have uh, poverty models or education models that would just make a lot of people literate? Which is not a bad idea, primary schooling and middle school and so on. They're all valuable. You know, it's good to send them. But is there a different place for poverty model you know, beyond that? Unfortunately, today, all the poverty models that exist today, they don't talk about quality. They talk about quantity. Lately, there has been some literature. You see criticism of government schools and so on. Government is the custodian of the poor. Government runs education program. Government runs health care program. And they are of substandard quality. It is the numbers that count for the government. And if you want funding, you have to create numbers. For $10,000, you've got to educate 20,000 people for a year. Then you get your funding. For poor people, there is one standard. For rich people, there is another standard. Rich people send their kids to the best schools. Poor people send them to government schools, and they become literate. That's a model that we have today. And I felt that if we are going to break the cycle of disadvantage, social and economic disadvantage, you have to do something different. And I also thought through, in my own mind, I decided that preaching to people not to discriminate each other is not going to do anything. The landlords and these upper castes are going to behave the same way. The only time they will change their behavior is when the poor, the untouchables, gain good employment. They build a nice home. They are professionals. Then the whole thing changes. In fact, I found out that when an untouchable woman has two cows, her status goes up in the village. She's got two cows now. She never had a cow. So economics is the way. At least as a businessman, that is the way I understood that there is no use talking to people Otherwise, we will all be going to the church and preaching, and everybody comes out of the church and do all the right things. It hasn't happened. There will be no injustice in this world if that was possible. So my thought was, how do I empower these people, especially the poor? And I could think of one way through education. And the way, place to put it, that investment is on children, because grown-ups it's very difficult to change. Once they pass 18, 20, 25, and so on, I can try my level best to educate them. I don't think I can. I can teach them a few skills. They may be able to you know, fix a mech, you know, car you know, repair or something. I can teach them, and they'll have a job. But I can't change them. They are not going to be tomorrow's lawyers or architects or you know, professors or uh, engineers or whatever. They are not going to be. I cannot change the others. So it's like Germany and East and West Germany. West Germany gave it up. West Germany gave it up on the East Germans. 
So OK, put them on social programs. Give them handouts. OK, same thing is true. So I realized that the investment has to be on the children. And if I can create an institution, Chandi Bhavan, that would take a few children and give them the best care and the best education, and they become leaders of tomorrow. They will carry with them hundreds of others, their own families and elsewhere. They will make their own contribution. And if I had 100 Chandi Bhavans, that's what I wanted to do in the beginning. I was so naive that I thought that I could create 100 Chandi Bhavans, and I'm still struggling to run one. OK? And uh, so, uh, but there are hun hundreds of Indians, Indi people of Indian origin, who can run hundreds of Chandi Bhavans. There is no shortage of people with immense wealth of Indian origin. They can start it. They can break the cycle of uh, you know, social discrimination. 2,000 years of uh, caste system can be broken within less than 50 years if we had many Shanti Bhavans where the children of Shanti Bhavans will become leaders of tomorrow. They will carry others. That was my original mission. But then I also realized that most people will be going to government schools. You know, the government schools are miserable. Infrastructure is breaking down, roof is leaking. You know, teachers don't turn up. You know, absolute toilets are not working. Girls come to the school until 10.30. By the time they need to go to the toilet, they can't. there is no door to the toilet, nothing. So they run home, and there is no studies after that. For five uh, primary school grades, there are hardly two teachers, or 2.2 teachers. That's what I found out in all the schools. So how do you run a school? And imagine, think of yourself. If you are sick, can you study? No. If you've got a chronic ailment, can you study? No. If you're coughing all the time, can you study? No. If your stomach is empty in the morning, you haven't had your breakfast, can you study? No. It's not school attendance. World Bank statistics will tell you school attendance has gone up significantly. Wonderful. They turned up in school. Is that what you want, or you want outcome? And so you got all these problems are interrelated. Healthcare is in, uh, very important. Income, ability to have breakfast, you know, uh, all these things are related to education. It's not like every, one thing is, you know, discrete. So you got to tackle all these problems together. And area public schools, I decided that, well, we need to worry about that. Uh, now, before I get there, Sadhana tells me I've missed some slides here. This is what was created. Uh, Shanti Bhavan looks like this. Uh, cottages where various grades live. And this was a place which I discovered uh, when I first arrived after 25 years 